Welcome to the weekend wrap up. It's your boy Rafi. Wow, interesting stuff this week. What started out as a simple harassment allegation about Greg Doucette led me down a rabbit hole of a potential fake entrepreneur. All I got to say is you should have stayed your ass in the house. Let's get into it. Yeah, buddy. It's on now. You may be wondering why I have a chain today. And that's because I'm an entrepreneur. I escaped the rat race. I built seven figure brands and got so rich with the least amount of effort possible. I don't even know what to do with all of my money. I exited seven figure business deals. And by the end of this video, I'll show you how you can get rich quick too. Quick shout out to Emperor Pink, AKA Millennial Hulk Coon. He actually sent me the main story today and he got me to go down this rabbit hole. I saw Greg Doucette post something about the whole situation with him and the lady, but I just kind of skimmed over it, didn't think much of it. And But thank God for Emperor Pink, you're a real one, bro. Now a quick headline, pre-sale tickets are now available for the Thor Bjornsson and Eddie Hall fight, and I just found out that the extremely talented and always stunning Steffi Cohen will also be fighting Avril Mathy on the same night. Tickets are probably still in Eddie's bio, go get them. Now before I get into anything, please don't harass anyone I mentioned on here. Uh, it could be justified in the case of our big businessman because he decided to attack first. But I, Rafi, the chief meme officer, am asking you to not harass them. No, I'm telling you, do not harass them, please. Anyway, for our main story tonight, we've got three characters. The coach, Greg Doucette, Carly Williams, and our third mystery man, our generation's finest businessman since Warren Buffett. Some of you might know Coach Greg. He's an IFBB pro bodybuilder, coach, and to some people, he's probably just a YouTuber. But this guy knows his stuff. He's had plenty of years of experience getting himself and others in the best shape possible, utilizing proper training and diet techniques. Buy this man's friggin' cookbook. Now, Greg is on the internet. There are stupid things on the internet. When Greg sees stupid things on the internet, Greg calls them out, especially if said stupid things are in his area of expertise. Both male and female coaches online say things that are borderline or blatant bro science to frame weight loss and muscle gain as something that has an easy way there. For example, when V Shred had his whole YouTube campaign saying cardio doesn't work to burn fat. Obviously it does, we all know that. But you know what? Saying something like that gets people talking. I'm talking about it right now. And as we all learned, all publicity is good publicity. It gets the engagement, the algorithm senses that, it reaches more people and casts a wider net. So while you do get a lot more haters, that wider net also picks up more believers that will follow you along the way. Enter Carly Williams. She's a fitness coach and her coaching business's main focus is weight loss. I don't think she excludes anyone, but her main area of expertise is mothers losing weight after pregnancy, which is really tough for most people. And obviously she knows what she's doing because this is what she looks like after three kids. That looks great. There are people who have never had kids and will never look like that. It's impressive. However, she also seems to fall into the bucket of online coaches that try to frame weight loss as something that there are shortcuts to and, you know, superfoods and magic combos of food that will get you that thick skin body fat. And this is why Coach Greg called her out, just like any other male or female coach that he's called out before. So she posted this infographic with the top three weight loss secrets for the easiest weight loss ever. Already looks and sounds click funnily. We'll find out why later. As Coach Greg said in the caption, point one, eat protein with every meal. Yep, that's fine. Point two, drink lots of water to fill up your stomach and prevent overeating. Fair. Water takes up space in your stomach, therefore it will make you feel fuller. But point three, eat as much turkey, chicken, steak, bacon, sausage, salami, nuts, maybe some gabagool, etc. as you want and you have the easy path to getting shredded. When someone reads that, they think, what? That doesn't make sense. How do you do it? Oh, look, she has a coaching program. Maybe she can tell me. It's the top of a sales and marketing funnel. I can respect that. It challenges someone's existing beliefs and makes them curious about what you have to say. But like Coach Greg says, if you consume as much high calorie dense foods, like the ones she listed, as you want, the result is a calorie surplus that will make you gain weight. The formula to losing weight is a calorie deficit, burn more than you eat, simple. Now, I understand. No one wants to do the long way. For anyone who's like a skinny 15 year old getting into the gym, there's a good chance that you bought those mass gainers from GNC, but didn't eat enough real food. So with the calories, the math wasn't mathing and you didn't gain the weight you wanted or worse, you got big, but you just got fat. There are no shortcuts to getting big except gear. So upset that other fitness professionals aren't just letting this misinformation slide. Carly posted a story. So she says real men don't treat women like this to sell their ebook. His freaking cookbook, which I haven't bought it yet, but it's probably great. And in the same breath is basically just trying to sell her solutions off the back of this. And that's okay, sorta. You wanna sell your programs, Greg wants you to buy his freaking cookbook. We're all just trying to make money. But her role as 
just the victim, is disqualified later after her call to action to her followers, she no longer gets to say that she didn't do anything. So back to the diet stuff on the story. She moved to an outside setting and explains the infographic. So basically she says, yes, a deficit is important, but there are different ways to get to a deficit. You know, she mentions all these doctors that she works with to plan all this stuff out. This is textbook Ty Lopez social media marketing 101. I would know. I took the course. I will explain why and how later. Look at all these experts I work with. How could I possibly be wrong? Bottom line, we find out that all this comes down to ketosis shit. I don't want to fight about keto with the protein and fat together are magic. Her words, not mine. My dad tried it. I think it's stupid. Looks great, but I think it's stupid. But, and it probably works for some people. I don't know. I'm not a nutritionist. I make dick jokes on the internet. Let's be clear about that. Also in this story, she shows some of the messages that she was sent. I've had people message me. I know people can be mean and over the top for, you know, like not really good reason. And there's no excuse for anyone to be talking to you or and like that to anybody. Those accounts are obviously burners because no one wants to be found out. They got like zero follow, they got like zero following or zero posts. So people just hid behind an account and that sucks. And she says that she respects Greg as a leader, but she expects him to take responsibility when his people bully her. T word and calling me the C word and calling me the B word. And then you saying, hey, I have no part in this. I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you the information, but the information that you gave to your followers as the leader of your followers, which I respect, um, I respect you as a leader and I, t I expect you as the leader of your community to take some responsibility when your people are rallying around you and bullying a mom of three and calling her very direct. Look, there's only so much you can do. Literally, all you can say is don't attack her. What everyone does with their time is their business. That's their choice. And she framed it as if Greg said, God, this woman is an idiot. Go harass her. No. He laid out your points, he said which ones were right, and which ones conflicted with the knowledge and experience that he has. He even put information at the bottom saying, I'm not attacking her, I'm just fighting against the information. Also, she told all of her followers to report Greg's post so it would be taken down. Interesting thing for someone to do that isn't worried about being wrong. Now, I wanna go back to what she said in the first couple of stories. Like this, I've never been called the C word or the T word, um, ever. I've never even heard that, and I do not think that it's okay. And I just got a DM from somebody that said, that said, don't worry, this will pass and he'll move on to someone else. And then I thought, you know what? I am a strong woman business owner trying to, I'm a mom of three. I am trying to help women and I will not shut down my account, which I wanted to do. I will not be silenced by a man who wants to bully women. I am not going to do it because you're right. He will move on to the next woman and that woman probably isn't married to a lawyer and she won't be able to protect herself and she won't be able to have a voice in this small little voice that I might be able to, to have. I am going to do it so that it doesn't happen anymore to the next woman because it is not appropriate. I will never, my sons will never say that to somebody. My husband would never say that to somebody. My brothers-in-law would never say that to somebody. My father, my father-in-law, they would never say those words. He will move on to the next woman. No, he's going to move on to the next online coach that puts something stupid on an infographic that tells desperate people that there's a shortcut to weight loss. Because that's what internet marketers do. They target people in unfavorable situations and say, hey, Here's how you get to an end result without doing all the hard work that you think you have to do. Sound familiar? Enter Raleigh, Carly's husband. Now, if you forget how he's involved, she tagged him in the first rounds of stories saying, go to my husband's page for the full story because she's not confrontational, whatever. Now, this is where shit gets real funny. I'll just play the whole uninterrupted story here. By the way, when it randomly cuts out mid-sentence and he doesn't pick up from it, that's not my fault. That's just how he posted it, I promise. So, most of you know, my wife, Fitness Carly, she has a fitness business where she helps women lose weight and kind of get their body back. And she spends a lot of time on it. So last week, we were doing what we normally do, working on the business, figuring out what the next steps were. And she starts getting these comments on her page of like, you are a bitch, you are a TWAT, you should kill yourself, you should delete this account, this is total bullcrap what you're spewing here. And it was weird. We get that every once in a while, but not that often. And she started getting a lot of it of guys that are like these 19, 20 year old guys that are 
trying to be like bikini competition, whatever the guy version of that, the speedo competition guys, these guys that she doesn't really try to get into her fitness program. And so we start getting a bunch of these and we way more than we've ever gotten. And so we start looking into it and there's this guy that had posted an infographic completely taking it out of context and, you know, built this whole straw man about how she's a liar. She's spewing lies in order to get people into her programs, which if you know Carly, which most of you do, it's like the furthest thing from her intention. (laughs) And and so he's got followers on Instagram. And so you get all these people that start hitting her up, blowing her up, trying to bully her into shutting her account down, being quiet. Um, and then if you, if you look at the guy, that, that's uh, what we've been doing over the weekend. So if you could go to this guy's profile, Greg Doucette, I'll do a screenshot of both his profile and also the article that talks about him getting caught as a steroid. I think this is probably the first story that I've ever done on my account, but it's crazy that someone with as pure of intentions as Carly has to try to get blasted by a guy that's like the basis. So when I watched this, I had a little feeling creep into my brain, which turned out to be right later. I was like, hmm, this kind of reminds me of Ty Lopez's old stuff. You know, people like him, Sam Ovens, those kinds of internet marketers. Casually walking through a beautiful home, showing its size, the TV, all that. He takes about three loops around his one staircase if you go back and watch. All I got to say is, you know, like he said, what a, what a thing for your first Instagram story, man. Congratulations telling all of your followers to go to Greg's profile. And I'm assuming report it like she said to do. But I don't know for sure because you got cut off because you don't know how to post an Instagram story or you didn't care to check it to make sure it posted correctly. And then, as all people do when they don't have any good arguments, he goes after Greg's character, pointing to an old article from when Greg refused to take a test for PEDs because he knew that he would fail. If Raleigh over here read the article, he would know that Greg was taking test shots, recommended by a doctor basically as hormone therapy. That might be the right term, I don't know. I also just kind of skimmed it and saw that, so maybe I'm wrong, but I know I'm more right than Raleigh. The point is, Greg was following doctor's orders, and thanks for going after his character, because now you made it undoubtedly clear that you know that you and your lady are wrong. But here's where it gets interesting. He told all of his followers to go harass Greg. All 9,000 of them. But wait, who are you talking to, dude? This dude bought followers for him and his wife. You have over 9,000 followers, almost 10,000, and you get between 10 and maybe 30 likes on a post. In contrast, you take a meme god like Bolo Swaggins with 26,000 followers, and you see anywhere between one and 3,000 likes on photos, two to 10K views on videos, and you have some outliers photos with like four to 500 likes. But overall, the numbers make sense. The math maths. Not to mention all the comments and engagement that pages like his get because they built a real community made out of real people. But wait, there's more. I read your boy's bio and it looks oddly familiar, very reminiscent of my time consuming internet marketers when I was young and stupid at 18 years old. I was about to graduate high school. My mother was very insistent on me going to college, but school had always been hell for me. I didn't like it. I was also ready to go make make more friends, party a little bit, you know, went to BG big fan. But I knew that the main reason for going to college is that so you have a better chance at making a decent living afterwards. So I went in search of making money online and Ty Lopez comes in the picture along with everyone else hawking their business opportunity courses that was doing it in 2017. My thought process was if I can make two to $10,000 a month doing social media marketing like they said I could, I wouldn't have to go to college because I was already making money. It got to the point where I would have been ready to spend my last $3,000 or so on the course in the summer I was that deep into it. Luckily, I did not have that money. Now, I did have about 3,000 or so sitting in my account by the end of the summer, but that was all gonna go towards my first college payment in the fall, so I didn't use that. Lucky for me, I'm a genius at finding free shit. So I found a site that had every single guru's course for cheap. I got a $3,000 course for 50 bucks. Thank God for whoever made that site. I went through it, learned a lot, but thank God that I didn't blow $3,000 on it. Now, why am I mentioning this? I'm mentioning it because after taking it, I was pretty much ready to sell a business opportunity course to anyone. Almost every single thing I learned was like, wait, that's how he got me in. Wait, I recognize that. Wait, wait, wait. So I know what this kind of BS looks like. I know the click funnels. I know the 
the green call to action button makes people buy more. You got to use exclamations or whatever and make people feel like they're going to be missing out. I know what internet marketers do to get you to buy their stupid course or pay them directly 10 grand a month to coach you or grow your business. And like with the fitness bullshit, it's all centered around you can be rich, but you don't have to do as much work as you think you have to do if you just follow me. College is worthless. Take my specialized course and become an entrepreneur. So in this case, Riley G here will teach you how to build an exitable business. Who wouldn't want to do that? Build a business for a couple years and sell it for seven figures, sell it for at least a million dollars. Don't you want to know how to build your seven figure exit? Why hire expensive investment bankers, greedy business brokers, and useless lawyers when you can just buy my advice, buy my mini vault and get rich tomorrow. Here's the intro video that he has on his site. Welcome to Exit Plan Secrets. Exit Plan Secrets is all about how to dramatically increase the value of your business in the shortest amount of time possible. So Exit Plan Secrets is what I use. It's all the information that I've gathered as I've taken my business from a six-figure valuation to a seven-figure exit. That whole process that I use, everything that I implemented to increase the value of my business to a buyer, that whole process I condensed into the mini vault that you see on this page. That is Exit Plan Secrets. Entrepreneurs spend a ton of time figuring out how to start a business and some of those entrepreneurs ever get to the point where they can scale their business and only 1% of businesses that ever get started ever get sold. So there's so few entrepreneurs that ever go through a sale process. And a lot of entrepreneurs only go through it one time and they don't tell you how they did it. They don't tell you the process that they use and the secrets that they gained along the way to get the best value possible for their business. The mini vault is for you. Exit plan secrets is for you. If you own a business or you ever want to own a business that you want to sell one day, an exitable business. It's everything that you need to do in order to move out of the operations of the business, focusing on revenue of the business, everything that you need to focus on that's ultimately going to increase the value in the eyes of a buyer. All of that is what we talk about in the mini vault. It's everything that I've learned in my own exit and everything you need to do in order to have a seven figure exit for yourself. It helps you focus on the right thing so you can ultimately get top dollar for your business. So if you ever want to sell your business or you want to sell a business that you're thinking about starting, this is the playbook. This is everything that you need to know in order to focus on the right things and have your own seven figure exit. Here's how to dramatically increase the value of your business in the shortest amount of time possible. Sounds like a shortcut to me. That got my red flags up immediately. But wait, this guy took his business from a six-figure evaluation to a seven-figure exit. Everything that he did to increase his value is in this mini vault. It is the one-stop shop. It is everything you need. Do we ever find out what his business is or was? I don't know. I didn't run through all of his YouTube yet. Maybe do a follow-up. But according to his bio, he has founded four seven-figure businesses. Two of those were exits and he's an ex-merger and acquisition lawyer. So I'm not gonna doubt his previous profession. I'm not gonna doubt that he has the knowledge of the processes of acquiring and selling companies from the legal side and like what different parties are looking for in an acquisition. But without any names of these seven figure businesses and exits, I smell bullshit. I was gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say that maybe he's just coaching people with existing businesses Still a little sketchy if you've never actually built a business, but it would kind of make sense because he's that was his world when he was a lawyer. But he specifically says that if you own a business or ever want to own a business that you can that you want to sell one day. Now, this guy's background is murky on purpose. That's what these guys do. I have brands. I have seven figure businesses. I got out of the rat race with my businesses. I don't know how you do that nine to five shit, but you almost never find out the business that they supposedly built. Dude, this isn't 2017. You can't fake it till you make it anymore people will find you out. Now, I'd love to see where this guy's career goes. I wish him the best, because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's actually built all of these seven-figure businesses, and he's just not good at social media, so he had to buy followers for him and his wife. That fact still stands. If you can prove that wrong, I'd like to know. Because she has the same type of situation where she has like 84, something like that. It's over 80,000 followers, and the math isn't mathing with the engagement. Go look. Now, I'm almost done. I just have one more promise to fulfill. I'll tell you how to build an exitable business. I will tell you all the secret for free. Step one, go build a business. You pretty much have two options here as a beginner, either solve a problem and build a service around it, mowing lawns, painting houses, photography, whatever, or sell something for more than you bought it for and do that every day. Step two, create systems for the whole business, end to end from getting the customer's attention all the way to handling the customer post-purchase. You want static, repeatable processes that you can stick anyone in that has the right qualifications and they can do the job no problem. To paraphrase Warren Buffett, 
It's a good business if it can be ran by a ham sandwich because one day it will be run by one. Step three, get your financials around, throw them in a spreadsheet or something and go look for someone to buy the business off you or look to get acquired. You've got a proven business model that works, you've shown that it makes money and you've proven that it can work without you. Step four, sell it, take your millions, go to Columbia, do whatever you gotta do. But I digress. As I said in the beginning of the video, you should have stayed your ass in the house, Raleigh. Don't pretend to be something you're not but I wish you good luck. Anyway, that was a doozy, and I think this was like a three, 3,400 word video. And we got down to business, that's word to Barbell EXE and his Callum clips. Now back to fitness memes, for our memes of the week, we have Gym Memes Official, Bolo Swaggins, The Games, Eternal Chest Day Genjutsu, Rick Lifts, Jack 3D Memes, Dark Iron Games, and Barbell EXE. I appreciate you guys watching, I know this was a long boy. Love you guys, see you next week. Ladies is pimps too, gone, what's your shoulders all? Niggas is crazy, baby, don't forget that boy told you kid. Back, turn up your shoulder, you got a kid. Back, turn up your shoulder, you got a kid. Back, turn up your shoulder, you got a kid. Back, turn up your shoulder, you got a kid. Back, turn up your shoulder.